What is going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today we are reviewing the Fitbit Charge 5. It has been so long since I have reviewed a Fitbit or honestly just like any smartwatch on my channel. And what's funny about this is the original Fitbit that came out, like when they first started making smartwatches, I reviewed. And it is to this day like one of the most watched videos on my channel. And actually a lot of you guys ended up finding me through my Fitbit reviews. So it kind of has a special place in my heart. I'm very partial to Fitbit. I've tried a ton. There are a lot of videos on my channel. I have an Apple Watch review, a few Samsung ones I think, the Whoop, I've done multiple videos on that. So I feel like I have a good like overall what I'm looking for and what I feel like the general population is looking for when it comes to fitness trackers. So, so if you are looking to hear the specs of the Charge 5 in comparison to the Fitbit Lux, which is what I had on prior to this, then just keep watching because we are going to get all into it. Are you going to do this review with me? Okay. All right. So there's a couple things that you guys need to know when it comes to Fitbit in comparison to something like a Garmin Vivo Active or a Forerunner, something that's a little bit more advanced and for like an endurance based athlete. For Fitbit, in my opinion i think that your average like gym goer who wants to track maybe like weightlifting workouts because there is the ability to track weights um, running rowing swimming things like that it has all those capabilities and you absolutely can do it but something like the garmin forerunner i think would be best for somebody who is like for example training for triathlons or ironmans or something like that where the watch can actually detect what you're doing as you're doing it and switch through so like let's say you know you're starting on the bike you don't have to worry about touching your watch it can automatically detect that you're doing the bike portion and then when you jump in the water to do your swim portion it will change that as well for you not to mention i think the battery life on those things are pretty sweet but i will say the display and some of the other features that are more techy on the fitbit side of things the garments don't have so it kind of just depends on what you're looking for whether you're gifting this for yourself or for someone else and what the main priorities of the watch and the capabilities that you want it to have are for fitbit in my opinion i think if you are someone who is prioritizing steps, sleep, general health and fitness, then I think Fitbit is a great option for you. It just depends on which model you wanna go with. And for this video purpose, I'm just discussing the reason why I upgraded from the Lux to the Charge H5 and the major differences. As you can see with the Charge 5, the display on the watch itself and just the width of it is bigger than the Lux was. And for me, I wanted something that was really small and kind of looked more like a bracelet, which is why I went with the Lux originally. If you go back and watch some of my older videos, I also had the Versa, the Versa 2, uh, the Ionic at one point, and those were definitely bigger and more clunky watches. And so I kind of just wanted to make it as like slim and fashionable as possible. Over time, I had this watch for, I want to say, well, I got it right when it came out. So maybe like almost two years. It was over. No, it had to be just over a year. The warranty had just ran out either way. And when I plugged it into the charger, it would only charge to like 27%. And then when I took it off the charger, the battery would die immediately. And so unfortunately, because it wasn't under warranty, they just gave me a discount, which is why I ended up buying the Charge 5 because there was a point in time when I was deciding between the Charge and the Lux and I got the Charge, didn't like how big it was and returned it, but I wanted to give it a second chance. So the reason for that for me personally was the battery life is six days plus. And if you have it on do not disturb mode, I was able to get a full week out of the Lux, which is, says it only has a five ish day battery life. So I'm imagining that with this, I'll be able to push probably seven or eight days, which I think is fantastic. If you know me, you know that I'm not a fan of the Apple Watch for quite a few reasons, but one of them being the crappy battery life. So the Charge 5 does have a better battery life than the Lux, although it's a little bit bigger. The display screen is obviously nicer for that reason. So if you're someone that likes to look on your watch, have the things available to you, you know, more stats, obviously there's more room for your finger, then you may want a bigger screen where it's not super obnoxious or as big as something like the Versa or the new Versa that they just came out with. With that being said, the major difference 
versus with the charge five that may be interesting for someone who is a runner or for someone who wants to leave their phone in another location and still be able to track gps the charge five has the in watch gps feature meaning that you can leave your phone at home go for a run and it will actively track your entire run with your steps your your pace and all that stuff whereas the lux and some of the older models you have to bring your phone with you so i do like that feature especially if you're somebody who doesn't like to be attached to your phone at all times and the charge five does have the capability to use pay from the watch so it's doing a little bit more in terms of not having your phone with the watch as well. You were able to load the wallet feature onto the Lux from what I remember, but you couldn't actually use your watch as like tap to pay where the charge five you can moving forward i want to talk a little bit about the heart rate monitor because on the back obviously with it being a little bit big bigger i should say of a sensor i am noticing that i am not having as much of an issue with the watch reading through my tattoos you guys know i'm obviously heavily tattooed on both wrists i haven't tried it yet on the right but just because i like to wear my watches on the left but every single fitness tracker i've ever tried including the Lux. I, it has to be like in the perfect position on this part of my wrist right here like where this light pink rose is in order for it to read accurately and even then it would pretty much drop uh, the heart rate signal here and there. It was pretty infrequent. It didn't happen a ton but if it moved off of that spot it was likely to go out and then it would show the two little lines as my heart rate. So I will say with the Charge 5 having an updated and more accurate heart rate sensor and as well well as it just being a little bit bigger it's definitely reading my heart rate more accurately than the Lux was and than the older models of Fitbit obviously both of them have the AMO LED display and they have the variable display brightness setting so like low medium high or always on display but obviously if you choose that you just are gonna kill your battery so I like to keep mine on the lowest display and it, honestly it's still really bright I have it on the auto wake as well so when you like lift your wrist up to look at your watch it just automatically brightens so i personally like that but you can have it on always on display as well on both of the watches it's also important to note that both of them do not have music streaming i'm actually not sure on the newer models or like the more expensive fitbit models which we'll talk about price in just a second but for the charge 5 and the lux neither of them are able to stream music but again i find it weird because on the lux i remember like in my app i was able to see the music or like Strava, but or maybe that's running. I think Strava was running. <laughs> uh, Spotify, maybe it had a, like some some music app, but you couldn't actually do anything with it. And so I thought that was really strange. So just keep in mind that if you are looking to stream music, you can't do it on either Charge or the Lux. The Charge Five also has the ECG and EDA sensors, where the Lux does not. So you can do those little tests and have alerts on your watch on the Charge Five for elevated heart rates, where it will give you a little buzzing notification that you've reached into a specific heart rate that whatever it is you set. And same for low heart rate settings, which I like if you are somebody who struggles with that and you want to get alerts on your watch or on your phone for having a super low or abnormal heart rate. I think that's pretty cool. So that is another feature that the Charge 5 has that the Lux does not. But obviously with that and having those like newer features and more advanced features, the price is going to be a little bit different. I think the Lux is on sale right now because it initially was 150 and I think on the Fitbit website right now, it's 109.95. So like 110. So it's $40 off right now, which I think is great if you were just looking to get something more basic and you don't necessarily need like the in watch gps you don't really care about having a bigger display not really too crazy about having the abnormal heart rate notifications then i'd say honestly just stick with the looks because i had that one and i really liked it i did like the smallness and thinness of it although i will say i don't feel like this one is as bulky but i do have the sport band on it so it's a little bit more breathable i for some reason i just like that better than the all um silicone one the original price of the charge five was 150 but then it is on sale right now for 119 and i guess prime you could get it for 99.99 so if they're both the same price and you want more features definitely go with the charge five as long as you don't care about the obvious like display differences but i feel like for how close they are in price range you might as well spend the extra $40 and get a little bit more bang for your buck. You know what I mean? I feel like honestly, the features for both watches are really similar. So it's going to kind of come down to like what is most important for you because at the end of the day, the app interface, which if you haven't seen any of my older Fitbit videos where I've gone through some of the app portion of things, go check those out because 
the Fitbit app kind of remains unchanged, in my opinion. Like, there's not really anything that the Charge 5 is going to offer differently in the app side of things. It's really gonna come down to the watch itself and what has a little bit more capability of doing. So like I said, in watch GPS, the ability to give you those notifications for the extreme or abnormal heart rates. You also have the ECG monitors and EDA monitors and you're getting a little bit more battery life with the bigger display and bigger heart rate sensor. So if you're somebody who really cares about that and you want to have that in-watch GPS, you're more of a runner, um, I would say that's kind of the biggest positives to it. Whereas if you're someone who's just looking to track your steps in your sleep, both of them are going to do that. And if you like the smaller display, the thinner design, it's a little bit more fashion looking, then I would say just go with the Lux. I don't necessarily feel that like the Charge 5 is so much better than the Lux. Like it's good. I like it so far, but I have to say as they've come out with these newer Fitbits, nothing has really been blowing me away. Like it's great. Don't get me wrong. And I like the Fitbit interface itself. I like the ability to track your workouts, but there's nothing that's like groundbreaking in terms of fitness smartwatches. You know, it's, it's fine. I, I have to say like I used to be way more enthusiastic about the Fitbits back in the day because that was obviously when there was not as much technology as there is now for these types of things. And I just feel like as it's become oversaturated and as we've gotten so many smartwatches, I mean, even Fitbit themselves has so many different ones to choose from. It's kind of just like lackluster, you know, like it's not, they're not doing anything that another smartwatch company isn't doing. So I hope that helps you make a decision. If you have any other questions for me, leave them down below in the comments as always. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick little review video. If you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, click that subscribe. I'm sorry I'm not doing Vlogmas this year, I know, but it has been nice to have a little bit of a break, I'm not gonna lie. So anyways, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in my next video.